with this one. <clears throat> In this series of videos, we're going to walk through a comprehensive example of adjusting journal entries. We're going to learn how to prepare an adjusted trial balance. And finally, we're going to do closing entries. It's going to be a three part video. In the first part, we'll walk through some adjusting journal entries. In the second part, we'll do, we'll move from an unadjusted trial balance to an adjusted trial balance. And in the final part of the video, we'll do a closing entry for this company. So let's work through the problem. It's a big comprehensive problem. Uh, the question says, Jake's Consulting does business consulting and provides auxiliary services for businesses. Their unadjusted trial balance and adjusted trial balance worksheet at December 31st, 2012 are shown below. And there's the unadjusted trial balance and the worksheet. Uh, you can see a column here for adjustments and an adjusted trial balance column. We're going to worry about this in the second part of our video. Uh, let's read on. Uh, it says the company has the following items needing adjustment and there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. That's seven items. And it says, note, all of the items above required December 31st, 2012 journal entries. No other entries required. So we're just doing adjusting journal entries here. Part A, prepare the adjusting journal entries. So we're going to do Part A in this section of the video. Part B we'll do in the next section. And Part C we'll do in the third part of the video. So Part A... Uh, or rather, Adjustment A says the company paid $12,000 for a 12-month insurance policy on March 31st, 2012. At that time, it was correctly recorded as prepaid insurance. Okay, so I've, I've actually set this up so I can work on it. I've scrolled down and I now I have it where I can write below it. Obviously, you won't have that in yours. Uh, so the company bought this $12,000 insurance policy and it's going to last them 12 months. In other words, they use up a thousand dollars of insurance per month. Uh, that's the the monthly insurance uh, expense for this company. Remember this: whenever we buy insurance, we're paying in advance. This represents a prepaid, and they bought the prepaid. And then March thirty first, they've correctly recorded it as a prepaid. Now it's our fiscal year end. Today is December thirty first, and we've got to say, okay, between March. In December, I don't have twelve thousand dollars worth of insurance anymore. I got to figure out how much insurance did I use up. And between March and December, we've got April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. We've got nine months, so I've used up nine thousand dollars. I, if it's a thousand dollars a month, I've used up a thousand times nine months. Again, that was a thousand dollars per month. I've used up $9,000 of insurance. $9,000 of my insurance has expired. Well, I've got to record that journal entry. And we all know that the journal entry to adjust prepaid insurance is always the same. It's debit insurance expense, $9,000. And we're going to credit prepaid insurance for $9,000. And what that journal entry says is insurance expense says we've used up $9,000 of insurance. We credit prepaid insurance to say we had this $12,000 insurance asset. Well, it's not worth $12,000 anymore. So that prepaid has to go down. And that's why we credit it. So there's journal entry A. Let's move on to journal entry B. B says a supply count reveals $3,000 of supplies are remaining at year end. Okay, well, we have $3,000 of supplies left. Now, supplies are another example of a prepaid. Uh, and just like prepaid insurance, where we have to figure out, okay, we used up nine months, nine months is expired. Uh, we have to record that $9,000 of insurance has been used up. Here we need to know not how much supplies are left, and that's what we're told. We're told there's $3,000 of supplies remaining. We need to know how many supplies we've used up. And 
that's weird because we only have one number here. How am I going to figure out how much in supplies we've used up? Well, I need to look at their trial balance. So we'll scroll all the way back up to the question, and I find supplies in the trial balance are 7000 So according to our records, we have $7,000 in supplies. But we go out to the shelves and we physically count 3000 So according to our records, we have 7000 According to reality, we counted them, we only have 3,000. I'm just going to call that reality. Well, our records don't reflect reality. Our records are $4,000 off from reality. We better fix our records. So this adjustment will make us in line with what's really happening. So I've got to credit my supplies by $4,000. My supplies were seven on my books. I want to reduce it to three, so I've got to credit it by $4,000. So I'm going to credit supplies by $4,000. So say I have $4,000 less assets than I thought. I counted them. And I debit supplies expense to say I must have used up $4,000 worth of supplies. Now again, a little bit of a tricky entry. It's dated December 31st, and again, if we want our headings of debit and credit, that's fine as well. But a little bit of a tricky entry here because we're debiting supplies expense, we're crediting supplies. A lot of people look at this and say, aren't we just debiting and crediting the same account? No, we're absolutely not. Supplies expense is for the amount of supplies we've used up or gone through. And supplies, the credit to supplies, is the amount of physical supplies we actually have. So we're saying the amount of physical supplies we have got reduced by 4000 because we used up $4,000 of supplies. Kind of a tricky entry, but again, it follows that prepaid format. At fiscal year end, at our financial year end, at our financial statement date, just like we did with insurance expense, we debit the expense and we credit our prepaid asset. Here we debit the expense and we credit our prepaid asset. Even though it doesn't say prepaid supplies, that's what they are. They're a prepaid uh, asset. Okay, so A and B in the books. Let's move on to part C. C says, the furniture, the furniture pardon me, was purchased several years ago for $8,000. At that time, it was estimated that the furniture would be useful for five years. An adjustment for a full year of amortization is required. So we have $8,000 worth of furniture that's going to last me five years. Now, it hasn't said so, but I'm assuming a couple of things that are relevant for more later in a course. I'm assuming that we want to use straight line amortization because it hasn't said otherwise. The other thing I'm assuming is we've assumed no residual value. And if you're not sure about residual value, I have a later video on capital assets and amortization where I get into it. But right now, we're doing basic, simple, straight line amortization. So we have an $8,000 asset. It's supposed to last us five years. That's $1,600 in amortization per year. And it says we want a full year of amortization. If we didn't want a full year, if we only had it for six months or half a year or however long, we could multiply this by some sort of ratio of a year. But they want a full year. So our journal entry here is very easy. It's always the same for amortization. I'm going to debit amortization expense on my equipment. And I'm going to credit accumulated whoa, amortization again on my equipment. Uh, and the amount is $1,600. Now, in your class, you might call this depreciation expense. It's all the same to me. No difference. So debit amortization expense, credit accumulated amortization, and we're all set. Amortization entries are always the same. Uh, moving on to D. The buildings were purchased, not purchases, purchased several years ago for $75,000. At that time, it was estimated the buildings would be useful for 25 years. An adjustment for a full year of amortization is required. So very similar to the last entry. We have the $75,000 asset. We think we're going to be able to use it for 25 years. Our amortization rate is then $3,000 per year. And we need a full year. Again, I could have done a fraction of a year. If it was three months, three-twelfths of that number. If it was six months, 
six twelfths or half of that number, but it's just for the full year. So debit amortization expense on the building and we're going to credit, I'm going to use a bit of shorthand here, accumulated amortization on the building for $3,000. And again, my debit's on the left, and of course my credit is on the right. So, so far so good. We're through A through D. We've done a prepaid, or we've done a couple of prepaids. We've also done a couple of amortization entries. Let's carry on to E. Four employees were due to be paid for two days of salaries. These employees each typically receive $300 per day. Okay, so whenever we have this situation where we haven't paid a bill, there's some sort of expense that's building up, salaries are an expense, and we haven't paid it, this is an accrued liability. Uh, so, I think I said it wrong. I think it's an accrued expense. I don't know why I had a bit of a brain <laughs> fart there. Uh, anyway, it's, it's an expense that's been building up over time that we haven't paid. It's an accrued expense. So what do we do? We figure out how much it is. So these employees typically receive $300 per day, 300 bucks a day, times four employees, and each of them is owed for two days. 300 times four times two means we owe overall $2,400 worth of salaries, which we haven't paid. 300 times 4 times 2 is 2400 So my journal entry when I haven't paid salaries is to debit salaries expense and credit salaries payable. And again, an accrued liability. I keep saying the wrong thing there, I think. An accrued expense is one that's built up over time, but we haven't paid for yet. So these salaries have built up over time. They've, they've had two days worth of salaries, which have gone unpaid. Now, keep in mind, these employees probably get paid every two weeks. They're not knocking on our door saying, hey, where's our money? They're going to they're gonna wait that couple of weeks. Uh, but we need to, on the accounting side, record the fact that we actually do legally owe them the money. If the business just stopped and went out of business, you know, on December 31st, we'd have to settle up for $2,400 with our employees. Just want to make sure I dated the last entry. I didn't. Don't forget, date all of your entries December 31st because that's our fiscal year end. Moving on to Part F. On October 1st, 2012, the company signed a four-month contract to provide auxiliary service to a small business. The contract called for the company to receive $10,000 at the end of the contract on January 31st, 2012. So on October 1st, so I'm going to have October, and this contract runs till January 31st, November, December, January. On October 1st, we sign the contract, and presumably we start doing work. And so October goes by, we do the work. November goes by, we do the work. December goes by, we do the work. And when January goes by and we do the work, we're going to get paid $10,000. Unfortunately, today, it's the end of December. It's December 31st. So we've got to figure out how much money we've earned up to December 31st but haven't been paid. This is an accrued revenue. Well, the answer would be, presumably, we're earning the money steadily over time. Uh, so in October, we earn 2500 bucks. In November, we earn 2500 In December, 2500 And in January, 2500 And the way I got that was I just said, okay, 10000 over four months means I earn 2500 per month. So if I've earned for October, November, December, and today's December 31st, I've earned seventy five hundred dollars twenty five five thousand seventy five hundred I've earned seventy five hundred for which I haven't been paid so I've got to record a journal entry for that fact if I've earned money and they my customers haven't paid me I debit amortization not amortization since I'm in a weird mood today I debit accounts receivable what was I thinking pardon me 
If I do a bunch of work and my customers don't pay me, I debit accounts receivable. And I'm going to debit accounts receivable for $7,500. I credit the type of revenue I'm earning. It looks like I'm doing auxiliary service. And if I scroll all the way up to my trial balance, I can see this company has something called auxiliary revenue. They also have consulting revenue. I think this looks more like auxiliary revenue to me, so I'm going to record this as auxiliary revenue. And of course it's $7,500 worth. Don't forget to date it, December 31st. And again, note our debit and our credit. So again, just to be clear here, because I feel like I might have muddied the waters with my saying amortization there for a moment. We've been earning money for which we haven't been paid. we got to figure out, okay, it's an accrued revenue, so how much money have I earned for which I haven't been paid? The answer is $7,500. Debit accounts receivable, credit auxiliary revenue, or whichever type of revenue you have in your question, and uh, you're all set. Final adjustment, adjustment G. It says on September 1st, 2012, the company signed a five-month consulting contract with the client. The client paid $2,500 in advance. I want to pause there. Whenever our customers pay us in advance, it's great because we get money, but we owe them a service or we owe them a product. When I'm in the situation where I owe somebody something but not money, this is an unearned revenue. They've paid me. I have to pay them with my service. This is an unearned revenue situation. Okay, reading on. The client paid $2,500 in advance for the five months of service, and that amount was correctly recorded as unearned consulting revenue at that time. Okay, so we've recorded this as unearned consulting revenue, uh, and now it's our fiscal year. So that was on September 1st. Today is December 31st. So actually, before I do that, it was September 1st. We've got October, November. December and if it's a five month contract from September we actually have January too and we got paid here at the beginning of September we got 2500 bucks for five months of service so again the math 2500 for five months means each month is five hundred dollars so that means September we're gonna earn five hundred October five hundred November 500, December 500, and January 500. That's assuming that the, the uh, revenue is earned steadily. I, I think it's a fair assumption here. Um, so we've got to say, how much have we actually earned from September 1st to December 31st? And the answer is, well, we've earned these four months worth. We've earned four-fifths of the revenue. We've actually earned $2,000. So we recorded this amount, 2500 as unearned revenue. And remember, unearned revenue is a liability. Well, now we're saying we've earned $2,000 of it. So how do I remedy this situation? How, what's my journal entry here? I'm going to debit unearned consulting revenue. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. My writing is just getting worse. That says consulting. You'll just have to believe me unearned consulting revenue for two thousand dollars to say okay it's not unearned anymore. remember unearned consulting revenue is a liability we credit it to set it up if I want it to go down I debit it so I do want it to go down I'm saying I've earned two thousand dollars now and so I credit plain old consulting revenue for two thousand dollars and that's to say you know what this is no longer unearned this is earned consulting revenue debit unearned consulting revenue credit consulting revenue and we're good to go I'm gonna pause the video at this point we're gonna do a part two of the video where we transfer these entries into an adjusted trial balance